Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, Lesson 9-4, Equivalent Fractions. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Georgia O'Keeffe. She said, I had to create an equivalent for what I felt about what I was looking at, not copy it. Okay, so it's not a real math quote, but she's creating equivalents of art and nature in real life, and we're creating equivalents for fractions. So our learning goal tonight is to find equivalent fractions and determine if a given set of fractions are equivalent. I love that picture of her, by the way. She looks very moody and artsy there. Here are our individual lesson learning goals. You can see that she was an artist. She painted in Taos, New Mexico, and I have a cabin in Taos, so um, I kind of bond with her because I really like what she's painting and I've seen and been to a lot of the places that she actually painted pictures of. She painted a picture of the church that I got married in front of. So our individual lesson learning goals are to cross multiply to determine if two given fractions are equivalent. I'm going to teach how to do that. We're going to find equivalent fractions by multiplying and we're going to find equivalent fractions by dividing. There's another really moody picture of her. And that is her home in Taos. You can see it's made of adobe, which is, I used to live in an adobe house, so the walls are like a foot thick and they're really warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Um, you can go to her house and visit it someday. Equivalent fractions are fractions that represent equal amounts of a whole. So you know you're used to equivalent fractions such as one half and two fourths or one half and three sixths because they both represent one half of a shape. So um, this isn't gonna be anything new to you. Our first example, and this is where we're going to use cross multiplication to determine whether 3 fourths is equivalent to 7 eighths. So that's what we're gonna do. And there's a picture of her as she grew older, still painting on some of her cool paintings. So we're gonna use cross multiplying to determine if 3 fourths is equivalent to 7 eighths. When we cross multiply, we always start with the denominator and we cross up to the numerator. And then we're going to start with this denominator and cross up to the numerator. So you can see that we make a cross in the middle that looks like a multiplication symbol. We always write our answer on top. So let me show you what I mean. We start with our denominator. 4 times 7 is 28. So you're going to write that on top and you're going to circle it because I don't want you to get it mixed up with your numerator. Then you're going to come over here to this denominator. 8 times 3 is 24. Now what this shows you is that these two fractions do not represent equal amounts. This fraction is greater than this fraction. 7 eighths is greater than 3 fourths. They are not equal. Okay, so they're not equivalent fractions. Let's try another one just to show you. Let's see, we've got, here's number one. We'll do five sevenths and four sixths. And I picked those because in both of these fractions, the numerators are two away from the denominator. Five plus two is seven and four plus two is six, which might make us think that we have equivalent fractions here. But we're gonna cross multiply to see. Now remember also that the denominator does determine the size of the pieces, so that might have some impact on our answer. Let's cross multiply, and I'm gonna draw, I draw the symbols every time I cross multiply. Start with your denominator, pause it, and push play when you've worked out this problem. Okay, you should have worked it out by now. Seven times four, again, We've got 28. Circle it so that you know it's not part of your numerator. Come back down to this denominator. 6 times 5 is 30. And circle it. These are not equivalent because 30 is not equal to 28. 30 is greater than 28. So again, we have two fractions that are not equivalent. I'm going to change to the red pen here. So you can try number 2. Number two, we're gonna compare three ninths to one third and see if they're equivalent. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm like, wow, nine is a really, you know, that's a bigger denominator, it looks like, than three. 
But remember that when you're talking about out of a whole, this determines the size of the pieces. Not You're not comparing how big this is to how big this is. You're comparing how big your numerator is to your denominator. So let's see, let's cross multiply. I've set you up, now pause it and push play when you're ready. Okay, you should have worked it out. Nine times one is nine. We'll write that nine right above there and circle it. Three times three is nine. And nine is equal to nine. So three ninths is equal to one third. Let's go ahead and try some different types of equivalent fractions. Now we're going to find equivalent fractions for the fraction 4 sixths by multiplying and dividing. There isn't always one answer for this. You could come up with a lot of different answers. So I'm going to give you some examples, but at the same time realize you could come up with a lot of different examples, almost an infinite amount of examples. Also, remember that the way I write fractions is vertical, 4 over 6. And the way I've typed the fraction here, which is what you often see on worksheets, is 4 slash 6. We always read fractions top to bottom, left to right. So let's go ahead and try that on the bamboo tablet. So I want to reiterate again that sometimes when we type fractions, we type them from left to right. But when you are working fraction problems, I want you writing them vertically. It's the exact same thing, 4 sixths is still read 4 sixths, left to right, top to bottom. But make sure that you're writing them vertically to solve these problems. To find an equivalent fraction for 4 sixths, or we can use a really mature word to generate an equivalent fraction for 4 sixths, we can either multiply it or divide it. If we multiply it, we can multiply it by any number in the world. We could multiply it by 2. In order to do that, whatever you multiply the numerator by, you have to multiply the denominator by. So 4 times 2 is 8, and 6 times 2 is 12. This means that 4 sixths is equivalent to 8 twelfths because we multiplied the numerator and the denominator both by 2. We could also multiply them by a different number. Let's try, hmm, let's try four. Four times four is 16. Six times four is 24. So four six is equivalent to 16 24ths. And here's something else interesting. Eight twelfths is equivalent to 16 24ths because 8 times 2 is 16 and 12 times 2 is 24. If we were trying to find an equivalent for 4 sixths and we already knew that the denominator of the equivalent fraction was 18, we just have to figure out what we did to this 6 to get 18. It's going to be either multiply or divide. So we know since this is a bigger number that we're multiplying and not dividing. And 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18. So whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So 4 times 3 is 12. So 4 6 is equivalent to 12 18 Now, that doesn't mean that 12 18 is equivalent to 8 12 It isn't. If I cross multiplied, I would find that it isn't. And that's because I multiplied these by 3, not by 2. So it kind of puts me in a different fraction family as far as equivalents go. Let's go ahead and try one of these. Oops, where'd I go? We're going to try, um, let's try 3 fifths. Because I want you to know it also works with numbers that are not, um, are not even numbers. Um, I can pick any number to multiply these by. So I'm going to pick 6. As long as I multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same number, I'm okay. 3 times 6 is 18, and 5 times 6 is 30. So 3 fifths is equivalent to 18 thirtieths. Now, if we go back to this fraction here, 4 6, 
I can also divide. I can't divide 3 fifths by anything because there is no number that will divide evenly into 3 and 5. So I can only multiply to find to generate an equivalent fraction. But I can divide 4 sixths by a number. I can divide them both by 2. Yeah. Four divided by two is two, and six divided by two is three. So four sixths is also equivalent to two thirds. Hmm, let's see if we can't get rid of some of this stuff. It's probably a faster way to do this, but we're gonna hurry. That's as far as we're gonna go. Okay, we still have our green pen. We're gonna do number four now, or we're gonna do number yeah, that was number three, was our three-fifths was number three. So we'll work problem number four now in your journal. Six-eighths. Now, is there a number that I can divide by both six and eight? Yeah, two. So one equivalent fraction could be gotten by dividing. Six divided by two is three, and eight divided by two is four. So 6 eighths is equivalent to 3 fourths. Let's cross multiply just to see. 8 times 3 is 24. And 4 times 6 is 24. And because those two numbers are equal, they're equivalent, 6 eighths is equivalent to 3 fourths. I haven't given you much time to pause it, did I? I apologize. So now I want you to come up with an equivalent fraction by multiplying whatever number you want. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Okay, you could have picked any number, so I can't really show you which number, but let's say you picked five. We'll multiply the numerator by five and the denominator by five. Six times five is 30. Eight times five is 40. So, 6 eighths is equivalent to 30 fortieths. We could use our mental math and cross multiply these. 4 times 6 is 24 and add my 0 would be 240. 8 times 3 is 24 and add my 0 would be 240. So they are equivalent. Make some up, try some, and check them. See how you do. It's time to challenge yourself. Equivalent fractions can also work to develop percents. So in this case, if Robbie spelled 20 out of 25 words correctly on a spelling test, find his total percent of correct words by finding an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. Because remember, percent is always out of 100. Show your work and explain your answer in your flip journal. Come back tomorrow ready to check your answer. Have some fun with that. Finishing up, there's another picture of our house. I just really like it. It looks artsy. Review your learning goals. Do you understand what we did today? We kind of did two different things. We used cross multiplying to check to see if two fractions are equivalent. Then we developed, we generated or developed or found some equivalent fractions by multiplying or dividing. We could still check to make sure those are truly equivalent fractions by cross multiplying again. So far out fractions, you've completed lesson 9-4 equivalent fractions. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.